the style is supposed to be charming, <laughs> easy, uh, not heavy, because the topic is the life of diplomat. The, the life, uh, and uh, first of all, for the very first introduction, I want to ask every uh, our ambassador, distinguished ambassador, to present himself in short, uh, uh, how he started, and uh, uh, what is uh, how long experience he has in diplomatic service. So please, thank you very much. Um, I'm an old guy, so I will go back uh, a long time. Um, I once. Uh, studied uh, in, uh, in Copenhagen and um, I cannot really give a good reason but for one reason or another I began to study history and Russian language and uh, that is probably the reason that I have uh, been in this surrounding for the last uh, 30 years or so. Um, when, I, when I finished my, my studies at uh, Copenhagen University uh, I thought that I would be a teacher at the university, I began like that. I was a teacher at a gymnasium in, uh, in Russian language and, uh, and history. And then after a couple of years, I saw uh, in the newspaper, Denmark had joined the European Union, that they would take in young diplomats. And I thought to myself, well, I think I will join, but just for a very short while. Uh, and after the EU championship, I will go to Moscow, because now I have tried to learn Russian for so long time, so I will train it. And then I will definitely leave again and go back to teaching in university. And here I am, 25 years later. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I joined the Foreign Service, and after three years I asked to go as first secretary to uh, Moscow. That was 1982 uh, to 85, in the days of the Soviet Union. It was Brezhnev who died exactly when I came. And then uh, Andropov, Chernenko and Gorbachev, so that was old days. Then I went back to the Foreign Ministry and said, now I want to go back to teaching. And my boss said, no, you will not. You are going to NATO. You will be the deputy of, of, in, in our uh, NATO delega delegation. I said, that sounds very boring. Uh, but, uh, but it was not, because a lot of things started to happen. And I was four years from 88 to 92 at our NATO delegation, uh, came back. Um, and then something uh, happened, because at NATO I had started to work uh, with the Minister of Defense also. And they said, well, could, can't we take you over and you could be head of our International Department in Ministry of Defense. And I said, well, that sounds, I didn't say boring, but that was not exactly what I had been thinking about. But I spent five years there, and it was very, very interesting, among other things, working with you uh, on the Baltic Peacekeeping Battalion and, uh, and these things. And after five years, I said, now I want to be ambassador. And I want to go to Vilnius, and I was four years here from 97 to 01, so nearly until you joined NATO and EU in those very, very interesting days when we were working very close together. After that, they asked me, would you like to be director of our Foreign Affairs Institute? I said, well, wasn't there something that I wanted to do 20 years ago? So maybe I should try to do it. So I was five years in our Foreign Affairs Institute, and that were when we worked uh, a lot together with your institute. And after that, I got the post that I had been thinking about in Moscow for five years, uh, from uh, 05 to 10. Of course, tough job, a lot of work. We also cover the five Central Asians and Belarus from Moscow, so traveling a lot, uh, but interesting. And after that, I want a little more quiet, and I went back to the region, back to Riga. Well, thank you very, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Is it on? Mm -hmm. I can never tell with these things. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate the Institute and all of you on this important uh, 20th anniversary and thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk about being diplomats. I often say that this is a job where I can't believe they pay me to do it. I pay them to let me do this job. It's so wonderful and I'm sure that as we go through the discussion you'll hear why. But very briefly about myself. Some of you have already heard about the transformative experience I had when I was 16 years old. I was a junior in high school in Chicago I had never really left the Middle West of the United States, and my family didn't have any particular links with uh, the outside world. But I decided one day to apply for a scholarship to study in France. I don't know why. I can't remember why. I saw a poster <laughs> hanging in the hallway in my school, and it looked like a very interesting thing to do. I applied. I won the scholarship, and they sent me from Chicago to Paris, where I lived with a French family and studied French language. 
and it, it completely transformed my life because I discovered the outside world. Uh, I discovered languages. I have a particular love and interest in language, foreign cultures. Uh, I decided then and there at 16 that my life would be an international one. But I didn't know if I would be a diplomat or a business person or work with an NGO or be an airline pilot or stewardess and those things. <laughs> and uh, as I went through college, I went to McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. That should be of interest to you because your current foreign minister, Minister Judelis, also studied there when he was a journalist at the World Press Institute. And in that university, there, well, it, college, it's small, but it had about 13% foreign students. That's a big percentage of foreign students for a small American university. So I had many friends from Brazil and from Iran and from uh, the Netherlands. And I studied abroad again. I went to France and I went to Italy while I was in, in the college years. And as I was graduating as a senior, a friend of mine said, I'm going to go take the foreign service examination. And I said, what's that? They said, it's an examination that you take to get into the diplomatic service. And I said, what's that? <laughs> I really didn't have an idea what diplomats do, but I knew that it was public service, a career where you serve your country, and I knew it was international. So I took the exam, and to make a long story short, I got into the Foreign Service, and I was offered a position in our State Department just as I was completing my master's degree, which I did at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies in Washington, D.C., and I recommend that to all of you. They have a center in Bologna, Italy also, where I studied for a year. Uh, and they offered me a job just as I had student loans coming due. So I immediately joined. And within three years, I met my husband, who was also a diplomat. Uh, he had an expertise in Asia. So we got married. I was older. I was 30. He was 38. We decided we wanted to have children quickly. And we didn't know we would be quite so successful. We had <laughs> four children within four or five years. And suddenly there we were, two basically independent career people with a very large family and two careers. And we decided, let's go overseas. It's easier to manage a big family overseas than in Washington. So we served in Singapore. We served in Korea. We served in Manila together. And then we went to Brussels, where we served for six years, actually. I worked at the bilateral embassy to Belgium and also at the US mission to the European Union. And our children grew up in those places through those years. And after Brussels, the kids were basically on their own, on their way to college. And we were asked to go and help open the new embassy in Baghdad, Iraq. And so my husband and I went, and we spent a year, 2004, 2005, together in Baghdad. And I often say that if you want to test your marriage, try living in a trailer with your husband for a year. It was an interesting experience. Happy to talk more about it later. Uh, happy we did it. And after that, I was lucky enough to achieve my career goal, which was to become an ambassador. My goal was to work as hard as I could and rise as quickly as I could to become ambassador. And I became ambassador to Azerbaijan. But then I was exceptionally lucky to get a second ambassadorship and come to Lithuania. Both countries that are really interesting from the point of view of history and culture and where the U.S. has important national interests. So and that's the long and the short of, uh, of my career. <laughs> thank you very much, Anna. Very good story. I'm not sure I will have a, an equally good one. And thank you uh, also to Perry. It's interesting to see that we seem to have some, some uh, traits in common which may be similar to, to many of the diplomats. Uh, one is that it was also never my, my clear goal in life or a dream to become a diplomat, but I was always very thrilled by learning about other countries, other cultures, learning languages. So that is how I started. I come from a town in southern Sweden called Bund, a university town. It's a place where you feel that you sort of look outwards over the sea and the first thing you see is of course Copenhagen which <laughs> I have to admit at that time I was considering my capital I would not uh, say that to my, my uh, authorities today so please don't report it but but it's a place in Sweden where you always feel attracted to go abroad and I also did that at a quite uh, early age I also had uh, one year in France for instance when I was 18 I moved alone to France I did not live in a family but completely alone which made it perhaps even more fun and I realized that, um, that uh, this was a type of experience that I wanted to have more of I, I studied languages 
Uh, and during my studies, I focused a lot on inter other countries, on languages, on history as well, and on international affairs. So I took my master's degree in uh, New York at the Columbia uh, School of International Affairs. And I went on to take a PhD also on internationalist uh, issues in, at Lund University. But all through that time, I think I always thought that I would be more of an analyst, a researcher. And then one day I started to feel that it was a little bit narrow. I was walking in the corridors, I was analyzing, I was assessing, but I was starting to feel I want to participate somewhere. I want to be where the decisions are being taken. And that is what uh, one day again, in a similar way, that was the ad in the Swedish paper uh, about the foreign service exam. And I thought this is a good way to uh, test uh, whether I'm competitive or not. So I was not really sure it would be a good thing for me, but I was accepted. And I have to say that ever since I have had not uh, a boring day. Uh, it's, it's been a, a fantastic job uh, so far. I think it's a combination of uh, being interested in, in foreign countries, in foreign affairs, uh, in, uh, about foreign people's learning things, being curious, but also doing something that is important, where you can feel every day that you are contributing with small steps to promoting not only your own country's interests but, and values, but also to making the world a little bit better. I think this is the underlying motivating force, which I, I think it makes this job so very interesting. Uh, I started in the foreign ministry in 1993, and I uh, spent uh, time doing a number of different uh, different things. Uh, my first job uh, from 93 to 96 was very formative in a way. I was responsible for for all the work relating to the former Yugoslavia, and you know what was happening uh, in that uh, country during these very tragic years, and and where uh, also. Uh, uh, very direct effects were were um, uh, were felt in my own country. We had a hundred thousand asylum seekers. More than that, coming during these years, we had troops in the country. We had uh, very strong contacts, uh, and it was a, a around the clock job. So I would say being an ambassador here is, is very much easier than being a, a very low level desk officer who is called up uh, at night every night uh, to to answer all the questions. Um, uh, but I then uh, served in different positions, uh, both in Stockholm and also uh, abroad in Tokyo. I spent four years in Tokyo. I also served in the Prime Minister's office uh, for a while. And I've also served uh, uh, in the United Nations as an international service, uh, civil servant, a UN uh, diplomat, as uh, chief of the UN systems counterterrorism uh, work. Uh, uh, so uh, I had different, uh, different experiences. Uh, uh, I think that uh, serving one government is in many ways very much easier than serving 193 governments, <laughs> which I, I did in the UN. Uh, so it's a different experience, but, but that was also a very, very interesting one because you really learn how to uh, read the nuances and the different, uh, different perspectives of so many countries. It's very much opened my eyes to the rest of the world, I could realize that even if I had been a Swedish diplomat for many years, working with many countries, my perspectives were still rather narrow in the sense that I was always rooted in the Swedish perspective. And once you become an international civil servant, that really opened my eyes in, in, very, uh, in very, very new ways. Uh, I know that you have several uh, other questions, so I will not be, be too long, but uh, as, as Anne mentioned, uh, having a family, I also have a family. I have not as successful as Anne, I only have three children, uh, but um, uh, it is of course um, uh, both uh, a challenge but also many opportunities uh, that it brings to have, have a family with you uh, when you're a diplomat. My husband is a journalist, which has been uh, a rather useful combination. He has been able to uh, to uh, work in many of the places. In some places he actually worked more than I did. When we served in Japan, he was the for correspondent uh, for the Japan and the Korean Peninsula, for instance, for uh, for the biggest Swedish daily. So he was then working around the clock and, and uh, that was actually more work than I had in the embassy. So we have been uh, throughout our life trying to balance uh, and to see that both of us have had during periods, interesting <laughs> tasks to perform, and of course, always taking decisions that we have thought were good for as many members of the family as possible. When the family grows, when, when you are five people, finding a solution that is 
uh, good for, for the majority, which you have to strive <laughs> for. Uh, but uh, that's why I'm so very happy to be here in Vilnius for many, many reasons. Uh, being a diplomat in a very, very close neighboring country with which we have so tight and close relations is really something special. Uh, I can imagine no more interesting job because it really means that we have on a daily basis so many contacts going on and it's also uh, an extremely delightful place to be and I think that you will very soon interrupt me because I'm being too long so I will uh, hand, hand over the mic to my next question. <laughs> Thank you, Cecilia. Thanks, Ramunas, for inviting to this uh, to this interesting gathering. Thanks, Alfonsas, for for the question. Actually, uh, I pushed uh, Alfonsas for for writing an interesting book about the job of ambassador because, like ten years ago, when I was lecturing here in, in this institute, the subject with the strange title, "The Art of Diplomacy," I suddenly discovered that there, there, were, there were no books in the Sweden language about uh, diplomacy, about being an, an ambassador. Uh, now we have some, but, but Alfons has uh, written a uh, quite, quite tall book with his personal experience, what uh, it means to be an uh, ambassador, uh, to, to be a constructor of embassy and, and other aspects of diplomatic life. So it's a good uh, guidebook. And but for myself, uh, thinking about today's discussion, I, I made kind of a conclusion uh, for myself that uh, diplomacy probably was invented in the old times when tribes, instead of eating ambassadors, started feeding them <laughs> and uh, giving them some, something for, uh, to drink. And then it, it started, um, for myself, uh, diplomacy started uh, 21 year, uh, year uh, ago. So. I'm a bit older than, uh, than uh, the Institute. Uh, and <laughs> those times, uh, philologists and mathematicians had the chance to, 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 to skip to the diplomatic service, not just uh, experts of international relations. And uh, I joined the diplomatic service uh, as a four year, fourth year student of the Vilnius University Faculty of Philology. I came and, and then there was a kind of uh, small examination and then I was asked the question what languages do I speak and actually I, I spoke English, I was learning quite intensively. We had in my native town Ukmerge, English language taught somehow from the first grade, strange school <laughs> for, for those times. Uh, but then I, I, I mentioned also all languages, I had a touch of <laughs> and in my first year of, of, of uh, Vilnius University that was Polish, Latvian, and I, I, I added also Latin. And actually, there was no one in the room who could check <laughs> of, of, of those languages. So, so I got into 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 the job. And one of the the, the first jobs I had to do was was the letter of, of the the Polish Prime Minister recognizing Lithuanian independence. And as, as I knew theoretically the Polish language, I was given this, this letter for, for translation, and somehow with, with, my, kind of <laughs> with, with all, all my powers, um, I translated the letter and made uh, the only one mistake. I somehow confused uh, the word Karta uh, Narodów Zjednoczonych, I translated as a map of the United Nations, <laughs> instead of chart of the United Nations, which is in my today's thinking is nothing to, 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 not, not kind of too distant <laughs> notion. And then one of, one of the first diplomatic challenges was, uh, it was the, the years of, of Soviet putsch, and immediately followed by, by recognition of a wave of recognition of Lithuanian independence, and I uh, uh, received a call and uh, the, the voice said, said in Russian that this is the uh, Albanian embassy from Moscow calling, Albania recognizes the independence of Lithuania. <laughs> and I said thank you, <laughs> <laughs> sitting and thinking, what to do now <laughs> with this independence and I went to the corridor and, and I came across one of the quite experienced guys, he, he, he was kind of graduate of Gimo, and uh, Said, what to do? I said, this, is, this was a telephonogram. Put this on the paper and bring it to your boss. <laughs> and I did it, and, and uh, this was the beginning of my career. <laughs> 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 and 
some Albanian house, something, something to me. And uh, then I got, uh, had both already as a diplomat in, in Warsaw and in, in Kaliningrad as a consul general and, and in Berlin as an ambassador. So in all countries that are quite close to Lithuania in terms of history, also in terms of literature. So I felt well as a philologist in all those, uh, those po uh, postings. So, so, uh, so I think that I have uh, interesting life, but of course it's a very challenging job, a challenging job, but probably will talk a bit later about this. Well, as uh, Elvis was already uh, well mentioned, I, in 1992, I was about to, in spring of 1992, I was about to graduate from Vilnius University Mathematics Department uh, in uh, Probability Theory and Mathematical Statistics uh, <laughs> discipline. And, uh, and uh, uh, but, uh, well, mathematics was not something that uh, I really enjoyed and liked. Uh, simply, I was pretty good in school, and therefore I, I joined mathematics department. But then I, I, I clearly uh, saw that it's not for me, and, uh, and uh, I started dreaming about diplomacy. And uh, one, uh, uh, somebody, well, one of our current colleagues, uh, uh, invited me to to, to come and uh, join Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, I, I was extremely happy. Well, he placed me, he then was deputy minister, and he placed me in the administrative department as uh, informational and technical maintenance officer. Uh, and I had, uh, th then uh, there were five computers uh, in, in, uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And basically my function was to teach uh, people to work with the computer, or basically to type and, and uh, uh, to learn the keyboard. Uh, and. Uh, well, that was not something that I really enjoyed, <laughs> and uh, I thought, and, and then I heard the news about this institute. There was an announcement that the uh, Vilnius Institute of International Relations, at that time it was still only international relations, no mentioning of political science, uh, had to be established. And of course, I immediately brought my documents uh, to, to, to Vilnius University uh, and applied to, to, to join this institute. Summer uh, 1992, I joined this institute, and I thought that that is the way how to, uh, to, to, to squeeze into the diplomatic service, to move from administrative department in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the political department and to, re to become a real diplomat. Uh, and uh, I was always looking with uh, some uh, jealousy uh, to, to, to evil this and, uh, <laughs> and uh, his colleagues in the political department. And I thought I need to be there. Uh, and uh, well, then of course um, I, I was really quite happy to uh, to get uh, a second mate from this institute uh, for one year studies uh, in uh, Aarhus uh, University in Statskunstkap School of Political Science. Uh, there, my good friend of mine also was sent from this institute. Uh, there we got engaged and then married. Uh, so uh, I owe to Denmark, my wife, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and then uh, after coming back uh, from Denmark, uh, uh, I was uh, in the ministry already considered to be well, having acquired quite considerable qualification, <laughs> and already a few departments were competing to to, to, to get me in, in, into into their ranks. Uh, well, I should. Uh, just remind everyone that at that time, the salary of the third secretary uh, in, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was 180 liters. And uh, if you, uh, at that time, that was the beginning of 1994, if you uh, chose at that time to, 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 to be a sales girl or sales boy somewhere in, in, in the small shop, you could get at least 500 liters. So, uh, well, you can imagine that it was not very easy for the Minister of Foreign Affairs to, 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 to build up a credible quality, good quality, with good qualifications stuff. And, uh, and, and of course, anyone who has come back from Denmark uh, and was uh, so mad to, 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 uh, and still wishing to stay in the Minister of Foreign Affairs, he was of certain value. So thus I 
I skipped it to the political department. I am also ambassador, you know. <laughs> so I suppose to tell some words about my way to that position. Uh, it was easiest way from uh, all the company uh, because uh, I was professional historian, uh, was writing articles and books and teaching uh, history uh, of uh, 20th century between two uh, European history and uh, was writing books about from Lithuanian history, uh, 18 of them. Uh, last was printed last month and suddenly in 93 uh, I was so smart that I wrote an article criticizing both former and acting foreign ministers that still we are in Lithuania didn't saw any reasonable article about what kind of foreign policy we are uh, executing. So next day I was invited to see the foreign minister and he proposed me to become ambassador in uh, <laughs> Mongolia. <laughs> no, <not yet. laughs> Uh, to, uh, to, uh, the, the, the issue was that we were enlarging our uh, embassy network, at, in, but that was uh, spring of 93, and I was offered to go to Austria or to Finland and to open the embassy of Lithuania, or to be a number two in the United States of America. Uh, uh, the ambassador was already selected, and uh, so I had one night to decide, uh, and uh, it was a revolutionary time. You, you, you will never offer such, uh, uh, you will not have, you will go many, many uh, competition, uh, you know, <laughs> and selections now. Uh, but, uh, but that was revolutionary time. Uh, it was a uh, uh, restoration of the state. Uh, so uh, all the night I was thinking, and uh, valses of Strauss were sounding in my here. Uh, so uh, uh, next day I came to the minister and he said, okay, now sit uh, on the chair and uh, be uh, strong. Uh, now we have only one offer, uh, go number one to Washington, because our candidate refused. So I, I said, okay, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Uh, no experience, nothing. Uh, I, I knew uh, diplomas only from archival documents, but that was very useful because I used all Smetona time phraseology uh, <laughs> uh, in, in my first reports about uh, the, then, of course, everything was modernized. Uh, so, uh, and uh, from that time, uh, I served uh, as ambassador only in four countries. That's uh, United States, then two and a half years as a resident ambassador in Canada, then two years in ministry back, then ambassador in the state of Israel, non-stop uh, ambassador to Norway. Uh, that was uh, my friends in Tel Aviv told that I was going from the chosen people to the frozen people. <laughs> uh, uh, so, and now back in the ministry. Uh, I told that um, I served only in four countries. You understand what I mean? It's not finished yet. <laughs> Probably. 